great American companies with beaten down stocks. Investing 101 for all I've had deal with stocks uh, that go down. And this time, if you listen to what I'm about to say, you will know what to do. And you'll never view a downturn the same again. So let's start with the start of the day. And that's Charitable Trust core holding Johnson & Johnson. For as long as I've been in the business, J&J has been a great stock to own. There's a reason it has a AAA credit rating, even better than the U.S. government. But a couple of years ago, we started hearing about a link between J&J's talcum powder and ovarian cancer. Specifically claims that their talc had the traces of asbestos in it. And asbestos, of course, is one of the most dangerous chemicals ever, okay, from a health perspective and, in this case, from a legal risk perspective, too. If your company sells a product that turns out to contain asbestos, it's almost impossible to beat the lawsuits, especially if there are any smoking gun memos in your files from someone in authority who might have even posited that there could be a tiny amount, just a trace of asbestos in an occasional patch, a batch of the product. And positive they did it, J&J, as any thorough company would have people do it. Now, you might remember J&J's former CEO, Alex Gorski, coming on this show to deny the allegations. Allegations that have been repeated endlessly by the press, particularly by Reuters, in a series of deep investigations and multiple follow-ups. No matter. Once the drumbeat starts, it's very easy for plaintiff's lawyers to recruit very, very sick people. People whom juries understandably find very sympathetic. Who wouldn't? Whether or not J&J's towel contained asbestos, you don't want to fight that kind of case in court if you can avoid it, because the plaintiffs are people you just want to help in any way you can, even if J&J may not have had asbestos in their power. At the time, we chose to buy the stock from Chapel Trust. Take a little risk there, which you can follow by joining the CMEC Investing Club, because we thought there was no way J&J could be permanently impaired by these claims. And when our view triumphed, we thought the stock would soar. Management believed they had a clever path out of the jam, creating a bankrupt entity funded with cash that could be used to directly pay the aggrieved, something a federal bankruptcy judge in New Jersey was willing to sign off on. We saw it as an amazing opportunity because the litigation was keeping a lid on what we thought would be a terrific stock once Johnson Johnson finished splitting into a consumer packaged goods company. You think about that, it's Neutrogena, Band-Aids, uh, Tylenol, and a separate pharma and medical device business, a pristine one. With the stock at about 170 when we started buying, we had visions of $200 dancing in our heads. But then the Third Circuit Court of Appeals ruled that J&J's bankrupt spinoff gambit was illegal. And the next thing you know, the stock is in the low 150s. So the Chapel Trust was sitting on a huge loss and one that could pain me nightly. The house of pain. And this is when it pays to have conviction in amazing American companies. Because we knew that J&J would be smart enough to come up with a way to preserve their franchise. Why? Because that's what they've always done. They've always been bankable. Bankable companies tend to stay bankable. And sure enough, last night at the close of trading, J&J announced a settlement with the, with the most of the tout claimants, what we call supermajority. Now, the cost is almost $9 billion. I know, a lot of money. But that's not what's important for you as a stockholder. What matters is the existential threat to the enterprise has now been taken off the table. So now the stock is free, at least to run above the $168 level where it was trading when the bankruptcy gambit was struck down. Although I think it can work its way back to 186. It's peaked for nearly a year ago. And I, you know what? After the split up, I think it'll exceed that level. And that's why I told club members to buy it aggressively, even up here at 165. Second one, this is one that I think is so sensational. I've been saying it. I was early, then I was late, then I was early again, and I'm talking about Eli Lilly. Not that long ago, do you know that Eli Lilly was the single worst performing stock in the S&P 500 at one point this year? The worst. Yep, number 500, having fallen, and the stock, the stock having fallen from 375 down to 310. Why? Really no reason whatsoever other than it moved up too much in anticipation of a potentially revolutionary diabetes and maybe weight loss drug called Mungiarno. I mean, we all thought it was going to charge hard out of the gate. And that's the reason why people are excited. I mean, this thing can cause 15% weight loss in a very short period of time. But it hasn't been approved by the FDA for weight reduction yet. Even as a competing drug, Wegovi from Novo Nordisk has. So the stock got ahead of itself, and it was crushed as investors started believing that the Fed can engineer a soft landing, which makes the defensive drug stocks, as we know, much less attractive. People can't flee these stocks fast enough sell, in a rotation. Sell, 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 sell. Once again, though, you had to buy the dip 
Why? Because it's Eli Lilly. And Eli Lilly's not a one-trick pony. It's also working on a revolutionary Alzheimer's drug that we heard today from one research house that could pop the stock by 10%. Now Lilly is all the way back to 362, erasing that whole decline. We're, we're only on day two of a rotation into the safety stocks. They usually last three to four days and then rest. I think that's going to happen again. Finally, there's one of my favorites for all of 2023, and that's Procter & Gamble. Coming in this year, Procter & Gamble got three big breaks. Cost of transportation peak, cost of raw ingredients plummeted, and the dollar stopped going higher. And yet, what did the stock do? Well, despite all these positives, the stock got body slammed. Why? Rotation. Now, with the yield of the 10-year Treasury at a multi-month low, meaning less competition for Procter's 2.4% yield, there is a grudging recognition that this stock could just be too cheap. Sure, at $151 as well, if it's last month's lows of $136, but we still haven't even heard a peep out of a single analyst saying good things. I think Procter goes higher, maybe much higher, as it's the, it's the king of consumer products goods, and its costs are coming down, but it ain't going to cut the price to you at the supermarket. What do all these things have in common? How about the fact that they're amazing American companies with stocks that get cheaper as they go down? And that's something you can't say about commodity producers or companies with hideous balance sheets, or certainly not with tech startups with no earnings and definitely not of anything that's enterprise software. Now, as I told listeners of our home stretch program for the CNC, CBC Investing Club, that's, it, it, it runs around 2.30. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.